Hi viewers, welcome to another edition of Mary Clinic Life. How are you today? I remain your host, Marlaya Ann Oputi. Thank you so much for joining us again today. It's actually our third year anniversary um, for Mary Clinic. Um, we are so, so excited um, about this milestone that we've clocked three years, you know, in... Um, in 2022 we thank god for that progress for helping us this far uh, marie clinic is your one-stop place for marital solution and for relationship information so whenever you need um to get the necessary information that you require to make your marriage work or to run your relationship through you can always um come to my clinic tv we have loads of resources for you to um, learn from. So today we are having a special guest in the house. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we will be hosting her for the first time on Marie Clinic Live. And I'm super excited that she's here with us. And I know that we are going to be learning a lot from her today. Um, she's the Chief Media Consultant of Kabiti Media. And she's the host of Your View on TVC. I know many of us, you know, we know her. And um, today she will be speaking on daughter-in-law and mother-in-law relationship. So uh, I would like to introduce to us Morayo Afolabi Brown. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Morayo. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you. me. Can you hear me yeah. clearly? Yes, I can hear you clearly. I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me clearly? I can. Yes. Thank you for clear. having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. You're welcome, Mariah. Um, so um, let's just go straight to our, our topic of discussion today. We already said that we are looking at daughter-in-law and mother-in-law relationship. And the reason why we chose you for this topic is because we believe that your own story is a very prolific one, being that you have your two mother-in-laws, you know, living with you, you know, um, in the same house in your marriage. And we felt that mm, that is quite uh, phenomenal. I mean, it's very unusual considering the fact that Today, in today's world, we have, you know, daughter-in-laws and mother-in-laws living like cat and dog, and it's like they will never agree. It's like a competition. And here you are, you have two of them, you know, under your roof. So uh, I believe that there is a lot we can learn from your own experience and the fact that you are able to cope well, you know, with both mother-in-laws, you know, under the same roof with you. So I would like to uh, I would like to start by asking you, um, have you, I know, you know, over the years or over time, you would have heard of the fact that some people will say, oh, mother-in-laws are also um, a major factor in determining if yeah. a marriage work or not. You know, some even believe that ah, the fastest way to break your marriage is to go and bring your mother-in-law <laughs> to be with you. You know, they believe ah, you know, that's a no-go area. You know, your marriage will break faster. So do you do have you heard about this before? You know, and what do you think about that mindset? Yeah. Well, I, we all know the MIL factor. Everybody's always afraid of mother-in-laws. Mm -hmm. And I think I was blessed because I had my own mother who was mm -hmm. more like a guide because anytime I had, I had my concerns. Now my concerns did not stem from problems I had were just based on what people were saying. So people expect you to, ah, it's not possible now. So even though I've not experienced any meanness from my house, I begin to work there and assume it without it happening just because everybody says it's unusual for mother-in-law to be so i'm always looking for problems my mother will not analyze it for <laughs> is it that they came to enter or sleep on your bed is it that they came to eat from your what exactly is it? tell me the problem gong gong and i've never i was never able to bring out one issue Second, mm. the problem will girl you mm. so i think that uh, my mother was a guide she was a very strong guy for me and and the fact that she was also a mother-in-law to my, mm. my brother's wives and i know how 
less they felt anytime she comes around to the u.s you know mm. in the house cleaning making sure that there's food you know there was just joy and peace around whenever mom is around so i mm. knew that she wasn't a burden onto others so when i when i when i hear mother-in-law issues it was kind of strange it was from aunties it was from church members complaints it was from maybe women in church people are just complaining about what i learned i'm thinking oh god so it's a real problem so i know for, for when i was a single girl it was a very difficult thing to to kind of understand feeling that i might have to deal with mother-in-law issues but when mm. i entered it when mm. i when i tried to assume a problem i take it mm. to my mom that mommy this thing and she would really analyze it from start to finish and then when, when i'm done with my mom she would make me realize that you don't have mother-in-law issues. I don't know any real mother-in-law issues. You would know. This one, Tokasileo, is not mother-in-law issue. This is all these things you just, this is not mother-in-law issue. So I think that was a great guide for me. My mom was, was a guide for me. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. Then while you were talking, you mentioned something about your mom was never a burden, you know, to anyone. And yeah. I think that that is the major fear for um, most daughter in yeah. because they believe that oh, when she comes, she's going to be a body, you know, that they are still grappling yeah. with taking care of the kids. Yeah. So how would they had, you know, another yeah. uh, adult, you know? Another... Interestingly, I have a brother whose wife was practically born and raised in Italy. So she, didn't, she wasn't very familiar with Nigerian food. She was Nigerian, but she went to Italy when she was like three years old. So mm. she wasn't familiar with too much of Nigerian food at all. So how my mother managed to live in our house mm. when she knows that the only thing my brother's wife will cook is maybe maybe quarter, quarter, quarter plantain <laughs> quarter, quarter, she fried plantain <laughs> everything in our house was pizza pasta yeah. uh you know all these all sorts of um mm. italian Job. food that's yeah. what we used to eat mm. a lot of food but my mother mm. well, when, when i see how mom see was you just enter the kitchen door, everybody go to the supermarket let me just take me to the grocery <laughs> store let me buy my own way do then you buy whatever you can buy. She'll come and cook her own food. So when I saw the fact that she wasn't anybody's burden, so I didn't know where to where, where I didn't learn that from anywhere else. So although I was hearing it just outside, I hadn't experienced it. Mm. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So when you were planning to get married to your husband, did you ever think that you were going to be living with your um two mother-in-laws in the house or as he prepared your mind to say oh you know what my mom and my grandmom are going to be staying here never <laughs> never so did he never. come as a surprise or as a shock to it you? was what happened actually is that my mother my father-in-law died in 2017 mm -hmm. right now prior to my father-in-law's death mm -hmm. he was like the sole provider in the house not mm -hmm. only that my mother-in-law was such a spoiled woman, you know, he would pamper her, he goes out to buy the yam, you know, the only thing she goes to market is going to buy, we have some fun pepper here, but the real food stuff was daddy that was buying it. Everything she wears, daddy yeah. bought it for her. She wasn't very exposed. She was the kind of person that just buy her everything. So she was very kept and she was living with her, her own mother in their house. Yeah. So when daddy died, yeah. now having to live by herself in Ikere or Inife. She wasn't used to anything. Clothes, mm. though, everything she wears though, was from daddy's. I was buying it. She didn't even know where to start from. Mm. Even the food, she was still trying to understand. Okay, you know, she was just not very, she was very confused. So mm -hmm. she stayed in Ikere for some time. But even my husband knew that he wasn't happy mm. because his mother wasn't totally happy in Ikere mm. because she was by herself. It was her first time in her entire life mm. that she was by herself. Yeah, so. so as much as we, she wanted she was depressed she was just her daddy just died only mm. her in the house you know mm. so it was a difficult time and i knew that he was planning to be going every other weekend or you know to be checking up on mommy okay. so when when so when he asked me i think mommy should come and stay with her for some time i had no problem in fact i had absolutely no objection because i understood that putting him on the road every other week to be okay. going to ife or he carried to go and see them was a problem <laughs> And I knew that his heart is always there. Check it up on her. She had to tell her, Roy, kill her, Jen. what did you do? She shall away, you know, stuff like that. When she's here, it's okay. So I had no problems with her coming. But she had she lived with us for about maybe three yeah. months or four months or so. Yeah. But yeah. inside her heart, there was a burden. Yeah. And she, she didn't have the mouth to tell us yeah. that her own mother was also not comfortable in the wow. house by herself so yes <laughs> she came she's fine in lagos with us 
but her mind was constantly on her own mother who was left because her mother used to live with them in with daddy in oh, the, uh, with daddy in the house so that mm-hmm. her mom herself and femi's dad they used to live together in the house so but she didn't want to be a burden so she didn't mm. mention mama to us just said <laughs> her so after she's been with us for about two three months so i think she now she was not feeling that mama is alone and mama you know you know mom should not talk mm. so she now called my husband privately and told her and everything i was just hearing my husband shouting hey, like she was shouting at her that way like i know to bring that one so mm. she, she just kept quiet after a while he thought, thought about it for a few days i think maybe two days after I just see him pacing on the room, pacing. And I was like, what? I was like, I'm like, what is your uncle? What is, what is on your mind? I, said, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. I don't, I don't know how to say this thing. I said, I want to sit down. What is the problem? I said, eh, the woman has been with us for some months. But she's very worried about Momo. And can you go? And she now wants Momo to come here. I already told her no. I told her no. I told her lie, lie. But you know, she doesn't know. <laughs> when she said everything, I didn't give him any response. I said, okay, I've heard you. Of course, the first person I went to was my mom. I said, Mommy, you can go to boy you. They said that. <laughs> they won't buy, buy, buy. I told my mom everything. I broke it down to pieces. <laughs> my mom said, eh, So what's the problem? I said, How can she come to my house? Mm-hmm. Are they going to sleep in your room? I said, No. Mm-hmm. Are they going to be eating from your plate? I said, No. Hey, the woman is over 90. What is she? Let her come now. Mm-hmm. It took me a few, it wasn't that easy. It wasn't an easy decision, trust me. It wasn't that if I'm this nice, nice, <laughs> nice wife, perfect wife. I thought about it for a few days. Mm-hmm. I came back home, I said, okay, bro, let her come. You know, and the truth is that Momo is such an angel, at least compared to my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law can still have her own issues. She, she's, she's very active. She, mm-hmm. She's the one that me, I can, I can still have me, I can still have a face off. <laughs> Momo is just beautiful, yeah. pleasant soul. She yeah. doesn't disturb. Mm-hmm. If you like eat pizza today, give Momo, she'll eat it. If you like drink uh, Coke and give she'll take it. If you like do salad, too, it is my mother. I love ah, no, 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 you know, that one you have to start worrying cooking the more if you But Momo, she's mm-hmm. precious. Wow. You know, so that's how it happened. So we didn't plan it, it just so happened. And they are here and they are happy, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just a joy to know that when you go out, you come, you know, Grandma and Wanley, Momo mm-hmm. is like there are people in the house. It's just a joy to see them happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Um, then do you think that their um, stay with you changed the dynamics of your marriage in the sense that do you think that your husband had to share, you know, the love, all the love and attention that should have gone to you, to mama, to mama? Do you think that really happened? Did you hear the question? Ah, it is. Like, like my husband is a conk, a kitty man. <laughs> Nobody can take advantage of him, but mm. you can't really. Live. Yes, I did. I did. Okay, I did. So my husband is a pure a kitty man. Yeah. You know, he and he knows how to show. Um, he's very firm. Mm. He's extremely firm. Firm. So he knows how to divide it easily. You know, when his mom tries to be all sucking up to him, he draws the line. Then don't pass here. You know, in the early days, in the early days, my mom, my, my mother-in-law would make um, palm oil stew. You know, me myself, I'm talking about that palm oil stew. Very, very nice, bubbly. <laughs> and my husband was like, should I come home? And when my husband would come, he said, ah, what is so bad to like? So bad to like? So I just like it. My husband would say, mommy, my food, oh, don't jay, I won't miss it. My John Jay. She'll make sense. <laughs> Both of us, between me and my husband, we know that it's that mommy's stew that we want to eat too. <laughs> because we enter the bedroom, say, ah, oh, be mommy, you might do. Let me know that. Don't mind me, but I, my jay, don't, let's not touch it. Let's not touch it. You know? Mm-hmm. But that was in the early days. But eventually, we just accepted that, listen, that's how she is. But mm-hmm. then she got the message that, listen, you have to draw the line. Yes, you have your own stew. Yes, your family has their own stew. My husband, mm-hmm. you know, every day, they do theirs, I do mine. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, there's nothing about sharing, sharing anything. He he loves all of us together and he gives them their own time. He gives me their own time. I have, there's no competition. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for that. So I know that, you know, 
generally speaking, people like, you know, in the part of the world where we are from, we are very religious people. So many people will say that, oh, but Bible says or scripture says that you have to leave father and mother and cleave to your wife. You have to leave father and mother and cleave to your wife. So, but we know that in true life, in reality, some of these things may differ you know, from person to person or from situation to situation. So like in your own case and with that of your husband, you know, some people may be like, oh, he didn't really leave, you know, to cleave because, you know, somehow you are all still together with his mom and grandmom under the same roof. So some may be like, oh, he didn't really leave to cleave to his wife. So do you think that at times we do you think that at times we need to allow the realities of life we, we, we need to adapt to some of the situations we find ourselves in or we should just you know take things blindly and say oh because the scripture says this then it has to be like that because i know some other women or some other daughters in law that will say no the only reason why she will not come is because scripture says oh he has to leave father and mother he has to leave father and mother to cleave to his wife so we have to be alone to start our own yeah. family now what would you say to that listen everybody's story is different though you cannot compare so yes the scripture says that and i said before my husband is a very firm person he knows how to draw the line very well when it's time for just him and me both of us he closes the door and locks it out nobody comes in and he also tells his mommy in my presence mommy if you want to see it you know so he's very firm and because he's firm and he draws the line often he lets me like listen i'm also very priority to him he's not a mama's boy yeah. He, no, he doesn't even have time to be having a uh, mommy mommy son conversation. Mm. Yeah, giving you your own room, you have access to our kitchen, do what you want to do, and just leave, leave us alone. So you are there, you are, you know, it's not as if they're constantly, but once in a while, he needs that mommy attention. Maybe mm -hmm. when I'm out of the house, or maybe when, when I'm not home yet, I come mm -hmm. home from work sometimes when he gets home early, I see him in mommy's room having a mother son time, and I leave them alone. True. But not, that doesn't happen all the time. So there are times like that, but he's very firm. He draws the line very, and it takes it almost every day. Even mm -hmm. mommy knows. So I've never, so yes, I think he cleaved to me, definitely. But because we are Africans, there are always situations. Mm -hmm. Because would I have preferred when my husband, who has cleaved to me, to be traveling every two weeks or three weeks to check in with his own mother or going or getting worried? And uh, we're in medical hospital. So what did the doctor say? Yes. In clinical blood pressure. This morning, we've taken, Mama is 98. This morning, we took her for some blood tests. Mm -hmm. This morning. Mm -hmm. She went to go do some scan for the because she's here. Mm. The other day she was having breathing issues at night. We rushed her from here to the hospital around 2 a.m. at night. Mm. Mama, within one hour, she was back to life. Mm. God forbid that happened in the career. How mm. will we do that? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the benefits versus what I want, that is his family. Mm. So I would prefer that they are here as well. I love the blow their rules. You know, yes, mm. my wife, for example, right now, I love to cook. But mm -hmm. my kitchen is crowded. My mom, mm -hmm. my mom is cooking. She has her own peculiar way of cooking. Mm -hmm. She first of all washed the pot with oil, with uh, with uh, salt and water, boiling, <laughs> and everything, you know, just where, so whenever she wants to cook, I just leave the kitchen. I don't even enter the place. Mm -hmm. Whenever I want to cook, I announce to everybody, I'm first on jail, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. everybody, mm -hmm. please leave that kitchen by this time. Everybody out of my kitchen. Hello, house girl, hello, mommy, you, every grandma, everybody, please leave my kitchen. I want to cook this Saturday, this weekend. I announce it to everybody, they leave the kitchen for me. Whenever I come, I still have them crowded in the kitchen. You can't share my money, you can't share rice, you can't mm -hmm. <laughs> be enjoying yourself. I go upstairs with my husband. So we found a way to kind of just cohabit, mm -hmm. you know, understanding. It's not, it's not permanent. But days like, like right now, with my, with, with, with right now, by God's grace and mercy, we're moving to a new house. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the new house, a sister also bought a house right next to us. It's a, it's a, it's a mini estate. So what his sister did was that, okay, my mom and my grandmother will move to the new house. Mm -hmm. So as we migrate to this new house now, they won't be with me anymore. They will be in the new house. We'll get them a help, somebody to stay with them. Mm -hmm. So they're still within us, but they're not in my own house. Yo. So now if I had if I had put my foot down mm -hmm. two or three years ago, could I lie, 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 <laughs> at least now I'm still getting what I want. I have my home back. Mm -hmm. I have my privacy back. In the next few weeks, by God's grace, when we move, they will be moving to the other house. Mm -hmm. And I'll have my own privacy. So it's not for life. It's not forever. It's just for a temporary mm -hmm. time. True. And when God sees that from your heart you took care of them, you actually took care of them, He will make a way. Whoever thought 
and my sister will buy a house next to our own house. Mm. Just she, she, because she was she, she lives abroad. She was feeling bad. But it's not easy for you to be having uh, keeping my mom and my grandmother in your house. But she understands how how was I feeling. Yes, I won't feel anything. They're not disturbing me. <laughs> she she has that burden. Yeah, Amy, I won't take it to me. I won't take it to you know. So because of that, she had to find us. We were buying our own. I said, Mom, let's find the house next to the Brown's house. And we got exactly next to us, next door. That next, so mom is just next door. Mm. You know, she can be cooking all her food on her kitchen. I'll be doing her own thing. No, 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 no hassles. Just because I've been patient. Yeah. And God saw that we were patient on this mm. matter. Mm. Mm. And I, I like some of the points you mentioned. The fact that they are a bit considerate. I mean, even his sister was considerate of your situation. Yeah. And that takes me to the next question because some other ladies or women will tell you that, see, my mother-in-law is very unreasonable. Even his son is very inconsiderate. You know, like there was a case of one that said, oh, they only had a room um, self-contained and the mother-in-law came to live with them. And the mother-in-law insists they must vacate their bed for her to oh. sleep on. <laughs> and she had to vacate the bed for like nine months. And this mother-in-law is not even thinking of living at all and she's insisting they must still continue to vacate their bed and she was like no i can't take this anymore you know so what do you say to that in a station where by the mother so that's is, where that's where the, the man. firmness okay yeah i kept saying my husband is very firm mm -hmm. as as i'm talking like this because i have a man who is constantly he sees there's, there was a time where my mother-in-law was complaining that I was blow drying my daughter's hair. That is bringing out all her brains. I was him blow drying the children's hair. All, all her brain would be frying out. You know, and she was insisting. So I, I said, hey, Mommy, no, I used this brain dry as a child. My brain didn't fry out. You know, she was really arguing. My husband came to her, but Mommy, is she is your child? You raise your own children. They are, they are all grown up. This is her own child. Let her use whatever she wants to use for her own child. Very firm. Whenever she wanted to throw in a few, can you go? She would tell her straight up in my presence. So, because he's firm, he doesn't hmm. take nonsense. He's a, he looks like a fine boy, but trust me, he's a fine boy with, with serious <laughs> native native intelligence. Character. <laughs> when he comes to the house, he every boy, every boy, even Momsi God knows where to be. Oh, I laugh at me. She, hmm. she minds her business. So hmm. that kind of husband, obviously, is not strong enough. You must, if you're going to take your mother in the house, you must be strong enough to enforce your own authority in that house. So you tell your mother, we'll get you a collapsible bed. This is your own bed. This is our own bed. You know, you have to make it work. Hmm. There's got to be reasons. You have to be firm on what you want. It's your house. Yeah. And, the, and the woman, the truth is that we can't talk much. It's our, it's, yes, it's our, because our husband is the head of the house. True. So we have to wait for his leadership. So if your husband doesn't lead right, there's nothing hmm. you can do. Is it me that I'll be telling him that mommy? But yeah, yeah, if the head dry, no problem. Man, be, man, be, no man. But kia, kia, he came to meet me. It's all rubbish. Don't concede to that. It's your daughter. Do, 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 do and blow dry the hair as you want to. Don't let anybody tell you not to blow your dry your daughter's hair. Ah, mm. What is that? <laughs> kia, kia. In my mind, I'll be thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so, it happens a lot in different ways. Mm. So many, too many stories, you know, that, but, but because my husband is very firm. So, anytime, when it comes to mother in law issues, for you to, to harbor mm. your mother in law, your husband must be indeed a leader, a leader who can stand his own. Mm. If, your love, if your husband is not that kind of person, if he's not mm. an assertive person, if he's mm. the kind of person that customer ambassador, that's mm. where I would tell you to resist. Don't don't that you're you're not ready because it's based on his leadership. Mm. It's based a lot mm. on his leadership, not about you. True. True, true. Now um I've also had cases where some other women would be like, Oh, this my husband is not doing the right thing. He's not doing the right thing. And I told his mom to talk to him, but even his mom cannot talk to him, even his dad cannot mm -hmm. talk to him. And they are like, Where else can they turn to? Now, have you ever had a situation whereby it's like, Oh, I need someone to talk to him and What's mommy. You know, mommy can't tell him the truth, you know. So in that case, as a wife, what you know, do you think you should be doing? You know, you know, you know, this was very interesting. I had this problem some years back. And there's this one of my mentors, he's late now, RDJ, Richmond Dyer Johnson, he's late now. When I complained, I said, Hey RDJ, my husband doesn't listen to me. Anything I tell him, he just doesn't listen to me. He doesn't listen to his mother. He doesn't listen to he doesn't listen to like, but when he, when his friend talks to him outside, he can listen to his friend, but will never listen to me. Yeah. How did you tell me something that changed my life? I said, yeah. Mariah, 
You have to earn your husband's respect. And how do you I say, oh, really? I said, how do I do that? He said, is there anything you have been procrastinating about that you have not done? Mm. I said, like what? He said, anything. It could be as small as losing weight. It's as, as small as you want to start the business, you do not start. It's as small as you want to start braiding your hair. Any tiny thing that you procrastinate about. Mm. Because I want to lose weight. I want to start a business. I want to start go to do my master's. I want to you say it with your mouth, but you don't do it. It's procrastinating. You lose respect. The respect he has for you, you begin to not because you've done anything wrong, but you procrastinate about certain things. Yeah. When you achieve, you start yeah. a business and it's doing and you're doing well, you're diligent in it. You start, you, you begin, you do something and you're diligent, and you're seeing, seeing how diligent you are, how you are flourishing. He yeah. begins to earn your respect. True. And when you, when you, when you, when you, when you earn your respect, earn your respect, when you talk to him, he listens True. because he sees you as somebody who starts something and finishes, somebody mm. who does, who's a bit better than him in certain areas. But mm. if you don't, if we just allow, if we can continue to procrastinate about the tiniest things, even as small as you want to take a walk every day. Today, mm. I want to start walking after, after eat dinner. And you just, you just use your mouth to say, it's after you go and sleep. He will lose respect. You, you, are, you don't, it's, not, it's nothing to you. It's, it's subconscious. It's not a conscious thing. It's just like a subconscious thing where she wants to lose it. She couldn't do anything. But she wants to start something. As tiny as, and, I, and honestly, when I started doing that, I would take a walk with my husband. Mm. When he's doing um, songs, I would get involved in his music. I would just, you know, you know, I would start something. I would, I would do, I, you know, I wanted to start a business. All those little, little things I used to talk to him about, I just never did. I started doing it. Mm. And gradually, and even as your view was growing, he was, ah, he was respecting me more. You see people calling me, talking to me. Gradually, when I say something, he would listen to me. Mm. So it worked for me. Mm. I earned his respect. Mm. He thought I, after I earned his respect, for me, in fact, I'm the first person he runs things by before he tells mm. anybody outside. It mm. helped me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I like that. So you have to earn his respect and, and not just assume that he will give yeah. you that respect, you know. Yeah. Without you know, and in it. You will. Yes. So that takes me to um, another question because, you know, some other ladies out there will be like, mm, that it's because uh, Mariah is famous, you know, it's because she's popular. That's why um, the husband would respect her. You know, that is the thinking of some yeah. people. Yeah. But they won't remember that there were years when you were yeah. popular, you know, yes. of course, your view didn't just start today. But yes, there was yes. a time that you were still like maybe at the backside yes. of the desert. Nobody yes. knew Mariah and Falabi Brown, you know. But those were the times you said, "Oh, you were patient. You were always waiting on his leadership." But mm. you know, some other ladies they don't believe in that patient. They believe that eh, your mother-in-law gives it to you. You give it back to you know, you ah. give it back to her. <laughs> not knowing that the implication of giving it back to her, you know, mm. could bring, uh, could break, you know, their marriage. As I something. said, it all falls back on who your husband is. So there's some husbands that True. they are, they are mama's boys and they, they don't have their own, um, they don't have that strength of character. Yeah. Those kind of, if you are the stronger person, mm. sometimes you have to be, so someone like a BC now, Obi Ajulu, on my show, she yeah. has a very strong character. Mm. Now, if, if her husband was the kind of person that was maybe he doesn't do anything, he's just he's very docile, mm. her character will come up and say, Mama, you can't stay here, you can only stay here for two weeks because you know, because that is who she is, mm. and she'll say it respectfully that Mama, Mama, this is, this is the plan. So, everybody for according to your own, don't mm. say because Mariah's own is working like that, it will work for you. True. The reason why I can get away with it is because my husband is a firm, strong man who has totally drawn the line between me and the, and, the, and the mother. But if you don't have that kind of a husband, it's a very risky business. Try to confront mother-in-law by yourself. Not mm. every, it's, not, it's not always, it might, it, might go, it might go either way. So mm. it's really based on who you have as a leader, who you have as a head of your house. That's, that's really it's based on. If you use my template, it might not work for you. But if you have a husband who, who, who is calm, see, the husband, I tell people, man, <laughs> when I started married for the first for the first four, four years, he wasn't working. I was the one doing all the bills. Mm. I was one paying all the bills. I did everything. And in, mm. when my husband enters the room or enters, you think he's the one that bought all the that he was <laughs> that kind of to that place. His presence last song. It would change. When he enters the room. He may not have a job. Oh. 
Mm. Once he enters, everything changes because mm. Brian just came. Mm. Because he had the confidence he has in it is a different he just it's has more than money. Was right there. Can you call it? He will remind you and you plus your pride, plus your pride, plus your plus your official cow, plus you, all of you. I own you. So what's your problem? Please sit down. Please sit down. <laughs> you know? When I'm trying to you know, or I say, please, who ate my mangoes? I say which mangoes? I said, I bought the mangoes. Uh -huh. So you bought your hand, so I can't eat it. <laughs> I'm the one that made the money. Oh. Let me buy the mangoes. Oh. He wasn't working at the time. Oh. I said, uh -huh. You bought the mangoes. Uh -huh. It's not for the house. I've eaten it. It's finished. Can't get another one. If you want to buy another one. I said, That's very rude. He said, What is it? You plus your mango plus everything. I own all of you. I can eat it. And the way he says it with confidence, even you, you step back. So it's not, it's not a pushover. Yeah. It's not a pushover at all. Yeah. Nobody can push him over. Sure. So that's why yeah. it's easy to for me. Yeah, that that's true. I think a lot has to do with the man actually, because the, yeah. the man of the house would be, would determine, you know, if the wife will have it very easy or rosy. Now yes. there are two questions. So the, there is this um, also mindset of some mother in laws that they believe that oh, when I go to my children's um, house to stay, it's for me to go there to rest. You know, it's for me to go there to rest. And some of these women, they complain that, ah, how can a mother-in-law be coming here to rest when they know that I've just given birth to a baby and I need help myself? <laughs> and you know yes, I'm, laughing. I'm coming to rest. So, they don't you know want I'm laughing. Yeah. When I had this, my last daughter, last child, <laughs> my mother-in-law did not raise a finger. When I say, when... People saw me bathing my newborn baby. I just came from the hospital. I was bathing my brand new baby. My mother in law was chilling in her room because she didn't. She, she was like, Me, Momo, me, Momo, me, Sherry. Eh, Momo, no man, talk. Because my the grandmother, Momo, used to, because when I raised all the children for her, so she, she, she never really got involved. And now, Momo is too old. Momo even said, I'm sorry, I would have loved to bath this child. I bathed I bath, I bath your, your husband, but my hands are weak. I can't, I don't want to let your baby drop. So please, yeah. you know, she was she kept apologizing to me that she can't mm -hmm. bath it because her hands are weak. So I was I had to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. So but am I gonna start going crazy? Be, ah, mommy, stop doing anything for me. Listen, I can, there's some there's some battles, you pick your battles. It's not everything you're gonna fight about. It's true. If you're living abroad, Uncle, won't you do it by yourself? Mm -hmm. If you're involved, would you not do it by yourself? It's so true. there's some things that you just pick your battles. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't I couldn't I didn't make it an issue. I didn't make it an issue because it, I mean, although a few people of my friends came to the house, but, ah, okay, what I love there. I don't want to newborn baby. They will they will take baby for me, clean the baby, just to show me. You know, mommy, mommy will recall content. Mommy, mommy comes, mommy doesn't see anything. Like that. She's there chilling in her room, you know. So people are different. But like people are different. So don't don't let us judge people based on that. She she you know, sometimes some other you know that are very, very useful. They do clean the house, they cook for you, they do everything. There are some, and there are some that are not. Mm. They're just different. So, you know, that, what, what are you going to do? That's, that was what I had. I didn't have a very active mother. Mm. And the good thing is that she likes to cook her own food. So, mm. so then that thing, I got extra help. So I used to, I, I, I had a, just one help. But the moment they agreed that Momo was going to come, I told my husband, I need at least an extra help because I have two, four children. I have, mm. there been, I had, it was a brand new baby. Mm -hmm. I have mom, I can't two people, I can't be worried about there's no paper, there's no clinic because I need somebody whose her job is to make sure whatever mommy needs is in the house. So we mm -hmm. got an extra help. So I have two helps in the house mm -hmm. to make sure. So one helps me and the other one is on standby for mommy, whatever she needs. Mm -hmm. You know, although she has started using my own help to do anything. You know? But the point <laughs> is that we were able to have a plan. And by God's mm -hmm. grace and mercy, we organize ourselves with well. So everybody is happy. Mm -hmm. Now that, that organization too, it matters, you know, ability to organize everything in such a way that well. there won't, yeah. won't be clashes, you know. So what advice would you give to some young um women that even before they go into marriage, they're already, you know, nursing the fact that oh mother in laws are usually they are usually terrible. Some will even be saying, oh, they are praying that their mother-in-law would have died before they get married. I've heard some, you know, say such things. What advice do you have mm. for such You see, listen, um, my mother-in-laws in my house have been a blessing. There was a time that myself and my husband got into a serious fight. Mm. And Momo got in between us and told him that, are you crazy? She was talking to him in that dialect, in Nikiti. 
Mm-hmm. That you know that this girl took me in this house. Put you throw your shouting at her like that. You know this girl. This, you know she was there defend two of them. They like they were like two witches defending me in front of their son. Standing, they could try it mm. because they see and appreciate that mm. I didn't abandon. I didn't let them abandon them in the kitchen. Mm. And to every single day they pray for me. Mm. They pray, and from the bottom of my heart, Mama prays for me, and Mama Brown prays for me, two of them. Mm. So I can't trade that for the world. Mm. And the truth is that um, they can be a blessing. There are some that are crazy. Those ones, if you have a husband who is a true leader, you can still manage them because he will be the one to ensure. My mother in law is not all perfect. Trust me, she has her own shortcomings, a lot of it. I can't just be saying what she does. A lot of things she does that gets on my head. But you know what? I just enter my room, close the door, get some juice, relax, and turn on the TV. You know, so you find your coping mechanism, you find ways you can manage yourself because you know that it's temporary. Mother in laws are not always bad. And with, all, with all my adjusting, that prayer I get is more valuable to me than anything else. When mm. two mothers, during answers, when my office yeah. was burning, you know, my office is about two or three streets away from my house right now, it's not so far. And when everybody there, hoodlums on the road everywhere, breaking bottles, everybody was hiding. These women, mm. Momo and Mama Brown, walked through mm. the hoodlums to look for mm. them. Mm. The hoodlums didn't touch them because they saw the gray hair on their head. Yeah. They mm. saw the how they were old, two of them walking. See, they mm. came to come and look for their daughter-in-law. Mm. They allowed them to pass. Mm. As, they, as they approached the gate, they now got word. They, they was on a rush back to answer the way. Morale is safe. Once he, once he, once he, once he hide or see become, they are, they are safe somewhere. And then they went back home. But these mm. two women mm. left, walked from the house to my office to go and find because when they heard that the building was coming down. So mm. how do I, can I buy that in the market? No. You can't. You so can't. sometimes we sacrifice. It's temporary. True. Some difficult mother-in-laws might be difficult just because they have their own insecurities. But you as a daughter-in-law, if you're able to even absorb them and show them extreme love, mm-hmm. that their, uh, their, their, their anger or their, their um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? Will calm down. They will mm-hmm. mellow. True. They will calm down because they realize that you're humble. You have mm-hmm. accepted them. So all, everybody study your own situation. Make the best of it. I can't mm-hmm. compare my own to yours. Yours is different. You make the best decision, but know that no matter what it is, it's temporary. You're not going to be there for life. Right. Thank you so much, Mariah. I think you have said the law. <laughs> I think you have said the law. So if you are going to advise the men, you know, on this leadership aspect, what would you be telling them they need to do differently just to ensure mm-hmm. there is uh, peace, you know, at home, whenever they are yes. on so to... priority yeah, your, your family is priority your wife is priority um you must set boundaries it's important from the beginning you set boundaries and no set boundaries behind your wife set boundaries in her presence it reassures her it reassures her that indeed that she's priority if my husband was calling my husband my, my mother-in-law on the secret and tell her, hey, my shibay, my shibay. he's not doing anything. But he tells her in my presence, he tells her and he tells me that, Morel, this is your house. Nobody can chance you in this house. So you <laughs> say it openly. Let your mother know, let your wife know that your wife is priority for you in the house. And when you do that, everything else, you can go to sleep. Your mother in law will be fine. <laughs> I mean, your mother will be fine in this house. Yeah, and the wife too will be fine. Thank you so much, Moriah. We don't want to take more of your time. You've said a lot already. Thank you, thank you, thank you for accepting our invitation. Um, we hope to have more of you subsequently. <laughs> and my regards to uh, Mr. Brown as well. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you, Mariah. Hope to see you some other time. <laughs> Bye-bye. It's really delayed. Yeah. So we have come to the end of today's uh, program. Thank you so much for joining us.
So um, we'll be having another special guest tomorrow, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. It promises to be interesting as well. We'll be speaking on your mon your marriage and your money. Um, hope to see us again tomorrow. Please make sure you share this video. Let's watch it over and over again because Maria said a lot of things which we'll be learning from, you know, to help uh, make our marriages work. So please take some time out to watch this video and i do hope it will help you till see you again tomorrow i say i'm in your host while i am over and i say bye bye